At the risk of being redundant, I will repeat again, I simply love the book of Psalms. It is in the book of Psalms that I see an amalgam of emotions that are indicative of the human experience. It is only in the book of Psalms that I get to hear someone ask God the question, why are you hiding from me? It is in the book of Psalms that we hear not only, this is good, Tristan, intercessory prayers, but imprecatory prayers. See, intercessory prayers is when I pray on behalf of somebody. Imprecatory prayers is stuff like, God, uh uh-oh, kill all my enemies. But most of all, I like Psalms because of the pregnant passages about praising God not only for who he is, but for all of the good stuff he's done for us. And I want to pause and parenthetically digress for a quick second and ask a question that I feel 10 people can answer the right way. Has God been good to you? Are y'all too quiet in here for me today? Has God been good to you? Has he made a way out of no way? Has he opened doors that no man can close? Has he ever healed your body? Has he ever clothed you in your right mind? Has he ever made your enemies your footstool? Has he ever picked you up when you didn't feel like getting up yourself? God has been good to me. As as I was preparing this lesson, I was reminded of a commercial that as a child I would laugh at. Until now approaching 40, my knees and my back start hurting. I understand this way more than I do now than I did then. It was a commercial of an older elderly lady who made a statement, and many of you can finish the statement, I've fallen and I can't get up. Now, who remembers seeing that growing up? I would bust out laughing. As a kid, you made fun of it. It was an old guy outside who said, help me, I've fallen and I can't get up. Then it was a sister in the shower who said, I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, on the trampoline, I think I tore something in my knee, my pop-up leader, so whatever they said it was. And now when it rains, my knee hurts. When it rains, my back hurt. Don't look at me like don't none of y'all got no pains now. Now, all of a sudden, I just don't get out the bed. I have to lay there for a second. Oh, y'all don't hear me in here. I now understand now what she meant when she said, I've fallen and I can't get up. The beautiful thing about that commercial that I missed in my immaturity, that I caught in my maturity, is that they weren't trying to highlight the fact that she fell. They was trying to highlight the fact that they knew how to get her up. And I want to submit to everybody watching right now across the world that as it looks as if America has fallen, I know somebody who can get us up. And whatever else my job is, it is at least to be a calming presence in the midst of fear and uncertainty, in the midst of ambiguity, to bear witness to this immutable reality that no matter what happens, God can pick you up. This 121st Psalm literally leaped in my spirit as I laid there thinking about the thousands of you walking around in a kind of biblical bewilderment, trying to figure out what God's word has to say about the believer's position in times of uncertainty and ambiguity. In the midst of innervating situations when America seems to be combustible. When times are telling us that we are at the end of the road, that there is no new start in place. God, what is God's word saying to many of us? The psalmist, to put it plainly and dare I say ebonically, in Psalms 121, he basically says, I ain't got no worries. Look at it with me, Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hill from which cometh my help, my help. Grandmama would tell the whole church up right there. Comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist is tripping on where his help is coming from. The question, of course, presumes that he needs help either immediately or in the future. And trust me when I tell you that from my heart, America needs help right now. When we're in the midst of a world health pandemic, blatant racism, social unrest, civil and social injustice, might I submit to you we need help. That when we have individuals who can't for the life of them understand why we're hurting as a people. When we don't don't have churches speaking to the truth or the reality that how can you serve a Jesus but then treat us the way they treated him. The world is hurting. When we find ourselves in social unrest, a world health pandemic that the latest numbers suggest it's getting worse. And a president who I don't agree with, neither did I pick who seems intent on dividing us. We need help. 
And might I suggest it is my assignment as your pastor, as your spiritual tour guide through this wilderness to shift you from fear to faith. And the antidote of the vaccine for your fear can be found in Psalms 121. Many people have been blindsided by the beauty of this opening statement and misunderstood the author's intent. We picture someone sitting at a mountain range and they begin to glance up and they say, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. But you don't understand if you look at it from the King James version, the problem and part of the problem is the original King James rendering. Let's look at it. Put it on the screen for me. King James, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence come my help, period. See, the original King James has forwarded our minds and con and, and, and contextually grasping what this scripture means. And because the original King James is misprinted, we do not understand the author's intent. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help, period. Yet the hills are exactly where the psalmist does not find strength. He looks higher than the hills. Later manuscripts show that instead of a statement, this was a question. Therefore, modern English translations correctly place the statement in the form of a question. Look at the NLT. I will look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? Question mark. Quest that, that's critical. See, one thing, and if I can pause and parenthetically digress for a second, many of us keep putting periods where we should have put question marks. You're my friend, period. When I should have said, are you my friend? Question mark. Because I want to submit to you that if we don't properly understand this scripture, it's going to lead a whole generation of people into depression looking to something that cannot heal them. It says, I will look to the hills from which come in my help. Watch this now. Question mark. The Lord, watch how he answers it. Will I look to the hills from which comes my help? Question mark. Answer the question. My help. Yeah. Now you get it comes from the Lord. Who is the Lord? The maker of heaven and earth. The Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. One name for God, put this in your notes, is El Shaddai, the most high God. He, that means he is above that can preach all my situations. Can I say it the way my granddaddy would have said it? It means that what's ever over your head is under his feet. I may have church by myself right there. He is El Shaddai. The Jewish composer of this psalm considered his options. Now, here's why I want to be, uh, I want to be clear. And if you, if you argue this with me, please email me and let me know better. With all my research, with all the studying we did, the Bible is not clear that this is David writing this text. For, 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 for commentary suggests, watch this, the poet. That's critical because most commentaries let us know when Dave is talking. This commentary says the poet. So whoever the author of this particular text is, is powerful because he wants us to consider our options. Back in biblical times, pagan shrines were built on hilltops. They were called high places, okay? Pagan shrines, false gods, were built on, on high places. I, you, you missed it. Pagan shrines were built on, built on hilltops which were called high places. Groves and trees were planted and people lured to these places to practice false promises of spells, magic, and immoral practices of cultic prostitution. I want you to catch this. So on the hill are pagan statues which were known as high places for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers where? In high places. See, see, if we're not careful, I need you to catch this. What the author is saying is on that hill. I want you to catch this. He's sitting in a valley, looking to the hill, looking at false gods and false statues and people practicing other religions. And he says, no, 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 no. My help don't come from the hill. I'm going to have church by myself. My help is above the hill. Or in other words, I want you to catch this. Don't look to the hill. Put this in your notes. Except no substitute. Did you catch that? He's saying what he's saying in this text, and I may shift from strings to organ today. I feel a hoop on me. He's saying, except no substitute. I would like to submit to somebody watching today that although we don't have pagan statues on our heels, the reason we had to bring a Confederate flag down and a Confederate statue down is because we can accept no substitute. I would like to argue with you that America is so racist that they believe protesting the flag is protesting America. That we don't even realize Sunday morning is the most segregated time of the week. 
because sadly we are coming to a reality that some of us are worshiping God and some of us are worshiping, worshiping the God we created. If your God, when I see God in the Bible, he is always on the side of the marginalized. When I see God in the Bible, he is always on the side of the least, the lonely, the left out, and the lost. When I see God in the Bible, he is always redeeming those which have been betrayed. If your God is not on the side of this social justice movement, might I suggest you are not serving the God of the text. You're serving the God of your beliefs and your imagination. Accept no substitute. This is critical. He says, watch this. Heathen Gentile nations worship and fear the sun and the moon. Now, I'm going to lose 100 followers. I'm going to lose 1,000 viewers right here. Because on that hill, many of you wake up in the morning and check your horoscope. So on that hill, they would, they, 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 uh oh, and did I just say that? They would worship and fear the sun and the moon, and people today trust in the stars. So we replace the worship of the sun and the moon with stars. In other words, I'm not looking to creation, I look to creator. It says when I go to that, that this brother is situated and acculturated in my belief at the bottom of a mountain. He's going through some things. Either he needs some help right now or he's peeking to his future and realize he needs some help tomorrow. And he looks to where everybody else looks and he answers his own statement. He says, well, I look to the hills from which cometh my help, question mark, my help coming from the Lord. I got to pause and parenthetically digress because I think I'm going to have my own personal praise break right here because 10 of y'all, only 10 of y'all going to catch this on this stream. Only three of y'all going to catch it in the room. You have not been through something until you've had to have a conversation with yourself and answer yourself. I don't know what this brother's going through, but I know it had to be something for him to make a statement, then answer his own statement. He's sitting there tripping. Can I put this in your mind? He says, I don't know what I'm going to do about this bill. I don't know what I'm going to do about life. Well, I look to the hills because everybody else looking to that hill for their help. Then all of a sudden, he had to check himself. My help comes from the Lord. I came to preach to two folk with anthropological duality who sees within you, sometimes you have to check the new you versus the saved you. Because if you ain't crazy, sometimes the old you will be like, I'm finna go out here and get this money. But the new you'll say, my help comes from the Lord. The old you want to go get another hustle, but the new you said, my help. Look at somebody and shout, I don't know about you, but my help. Sit down, he said, and all of it Put rod in my ear. In all of it, he says, can, 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 can I say three words that may send this stream into to a panic? Can I say three words that make, make, make a thousand people watching me just start praise breaking in their house? Can I say three words that may reveal if you really got a relationship with God? Can I succinctly summarize, modernize, contemporize, and maclearize this pregnant uh, psalm text? In other words, he says, God got me. I'm in the wrong church this morning. We've been playing church for the last two months. I may have old school church today that re regardless of what I'm going through, I like this scripture. He says, God got me. Social injustice, God got me. Fighting a pandemic, God got me. They're saying that the next wave, the moment that this lift is lifted, that millions of African Americans are about to be evicted because they pushed their note back. So now landlords are about to start in evicting people. I want to declare my God owns a cattle on a thousand hills that God's about to give some good people some money so he can come through for his people. God got me. This is critical. Psalms, I will look to my, my I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. This one line, verse one. Can you put verse one on the screen? Verse one expresses two things that you can't leave without. It expresses desire mingled with expectation. It, desire, it, it, it expresses desire, am I helping you? Mingled with expectation. I want you to catch this now, desire, expectation. Why is that important, Pastor Mike? I might preach, because whoever you look to, you expect something from. Whoever you look to, you expect something from. Can I submit to somebody that the reason people are so upset with you? I couldn't understand, James, I couldn't understand because of the seat I sit in when I was younger that, that I would let people down and they would get so angry with me, yet give other people grace. And then in my immaturity, I used, to, I used to say things like, they need to grow up. No, when in actuality, Tristan, I needed to grow up because the expectation of me 
was so far greater than the expectation of their friend. When I said I was going to come through, they thought the problem would be solved. And when I let them down, because the expectation was so high, the hurt was so much. This is for six of y'all who people can't understand why you so offended. It's because I expected more from you. Ooh, that, that can preach, can't it? That can preach, can't it? This is why when I do dumb stuff sometimes, people look at me and say, come on, PMJ, get it together, because they expect so much from me. I used to make excuses in the back in the day, like, I'm still young, I'm still figuring this out. Man, I'm in my early 30s. Y'all give me a little grace. And the Holy Spirit said, the moment you decided to put that mount alone, you laid your excuses to the side. Either walk in the expectation or get out the seat. And he says, whoever you look to, you expect something from. Desire mingled with expectation. Desire means I want you. Expectation means I'm hoping you. So not, not only so, so whoever you look to, no, I want you to fix it. And I'm hoping you fix it. I'm putting my desire and my expectation in you. The psalmist makes it clear that he is not looking or depending on the next president. He is not looking and depending on any political official, but rather his optical focus is on the Lord. I know we got elections coming up. I want to be very clear and I may get in trouble and lose some friends. Regardless of who we elect, neither one of them going to save us. Regardless of who we elect, neither one of them going to save us. If I go left, they're going to mess with my humanity. If I go right, they're going to they gonna step on my Christianity. So regardless of who I put in office, it is not about who's sitting in office, although we need people in office who can help vote and put policies in place that don't allow people to lynch us. But ultimately, our hope cannot be in another man. My help, help me God, comes from the Lord. Pastor, have you lost any sleep over the recent events? In all honesty, yes. Yes, I have lost sleep. In all honesty, at night I have needed this psalm to help me with my humanity. When the devil became my nocturnal nemesis, attempting to make me toss and turn all night, thank God for this verse 3. Because in verse 3 is what let me go to sleep last night. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall never sleep. As I've told you hundreds of times before, if God is going to be up, why are you up? The person speaking assured the pilgrim that he would have, put this in your notes, divine protection in spite of earthly deception. Divine protection in spite of earthly deception. This, this is nasty right here. He, he, he says, I want to make it very clear. Look at this, look at this conversation. Are y'all are still with me? Yes. I will look to the hills from which comes my help, question mark. Answer your own question. My help, I'm assured of myself. I will look to the hills from which comes my help before you can argue and pull me out of his presence. My help. I will look to the hills from which comes my help before you can convince me I need to be a Hebrew Israelite. My help. I will look to the hills from which comes my help before you can convince me I need to be an atheist. My help. I will look to the hills from which comes my help before you can, you can convince me that I don't need to go to church and this church is crooked and this preacher crooked. My help. I, I don't think you heard what I just said. I like what he said. He said, my, my, which is personal, which means I can't speak for you. So that's, the, that's why I'm grateful we're not at church right now. Because if we was in church, your neighbor would have high-fived you and you could have faked like that was your declaration. But you don't know who your help is until you're sitting in a home by yourself and friends don't pick up the phone. And all you can say is, Father, I stretch. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but I wish I had three folk. See, you have yet to praise God until you've had to praise God by yourself. I'm giving you 30 seconds. If you know your help didn't come from mama them, your help didn't come from a man, your help didn't come because of your paycheck, my help came from the Lord. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. If you know God is still making ways out of no ways, you ought to praise God because help is on the way. Let me sit down I start having church. Look at somebody and say help is on the way. That's the wrong somebody. Say help is on the way. Tell of y'all ought to just type help is on the way. Tell them I'm not waiting on another bailout. If they give me another supplement, I will take it. But if Donald Trump don't sign nothing, my hope is built on nothing less. I bet he won't allow your foot, K.I. 
to be moved. That, that's critical. He won't allow your foot to be moved. In other words, he won't let you stumble. He won't cut stump, stumble. Okay, okay, stumble, 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 walk, walk. Yes, Lord. Run. Yes, Lord. Stumble. Y'all missed your first shout. Because because there are two types of people watching right now. Some of y'all are walking because your faith ain't where it need to be yet. Some of us know exactly what God called us to be doing, and now we're running in the purpose. But the problem is whether you're walking mm, or whether you're running. The devil is still trying to make you stumble. Pastor Mike, can you properly exp explicate what it means to stumble? God says, because you look into me and not them, I'm not going to let you miss a beat. Y'all miss what I just, a stumble means the rhythm just got knocked off. A stumble means you couldn't pay something this month. A stumble means y'all been fussing and arguing. God said, if you put your faith in me while everybody else stumbling, I'm not going to let you miss a beat. Can I speak by faith that everything connected to us won't miss a beat? I want to declare you won't miss a step. That God is keeping you. He's coming. Here's critical Christian. But you can't define what a stumble is. Jesus. But Pastor Mike, my bill behind, that might not have been a stumble to God. Because right. God know the end from my beginning. There were certain seasons in my life where I said, God, why did you let me stumble? He said, Mike, I didn't let you stumble. Oh, my God. I said, God, no, 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 no. I went through something right there. He said it was divinely orchestrated. Yeah. See, when you stumble is in a season when you ain't in his will. Because when you're in his will, there you go, your steps are ordered. When you're in his will, your stumbles are ordered. When you're in his will, your falls are ordered. When you're in his will, your fallbacks are ordered. Your setbacks are ordered. See, God, did they stumble when they were in a fiery furnace? Because they was in his will. Did Daniel stumble when he went into the lion's den? Because he was in his will. Did Jesus stumble when he was on a cross being crucified? No, because he was in his will. What we have to be careful of, watch this, is when we're in God's will, what feels like a stumble was orchestrated. But we cannot confuse the pressure of being in his will with the pressure of being in sin. Did you catch what I just said? We, 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 we cannot confuse the pressure of being in his will with the pressure of being in sin. See, when I get outside God's will and act a fool, there's a difference in God having to rescue me and redirect me. See, when God redirects me, he's not, I'm, although I feel lost, he ain't lost. She, I, I don't think you heard what I just said. Kayla, although I feel lost. No, no, God said, no, you're right where I need you. Trust me. You don't know where you are, but I know where you are. That, that can preach. Six of y'all missed that. You don't know where you are, but I know where you are. But when you get outside his will, that's when he has to step in and rescue you. And God says, I'm giving you divine protection in spite of earthly deception. God who watches over his own will not slumber or sleep. That is, he will not be indifferent or disregard them. The Lord will be alert and protecting his own. Notice the text because verse 4 says he keeps Israel. That's cool in the game, but I like the A clause of verse 5 because the text says he keeps me. Look at it with me. 121 verse 5. The Lord, thank you grandmama is a keeper that, that's critical the lord mm, is a keeper preach mike the lord is the keeper push, push, push somebody i'm gonna go old school and if you don't want to have church you might as well log off right now push somebody in your house in this room push yourself and shout he's keeping me y'all y'all didn't catch that say he's keeping me that no matter what i go through god is keeping me bills behind but he's keeping me watching people get gunned down but he's keeping me People are hurting and afraid, but he's keeping me. Not knowing if I'm coming or I'm going, but he's keeping me. I, 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 I gotta feel that he's keeping me. He, 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 the Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace. Now, peace isn't the absence of a problem. So he says stuff may be going on around you, but I'm going to keep you. And perfect peace. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. I started to preach when God throws shade. 
That's what I started to preach, when God throws shade. Because God says, this is critical now. He says, why do I need God to be my shade? Because look at verse 6. The sun will not, watch this, strike you down by day, nor the moon by night. Look at, look at, look at verse 6. The sun will not strike you down by day, nor the moon by night. Our keeper is not only on the throne looking down on us, but he's at our side shielding us from harm. This does not mean that the obedient believer never finds themselves in a difficulty or danger or that they will never feel physical or emotional pain. This means, watch this now, the thing that God permits to happen to us in his will may hurt us, but it won't harm us. I don't think you heard what I just said. It does not mean you're not going to go through nothing. But what it means is it may hurt, but it won't harm you. You may bend. Who going to help me preach today? You may bend, but you won't break. You may fall, but you're going to get back up. You may cry, but you won't go crazy. He's covering me. Look at what he says now. The sun, throw shade, God. The sun won't harm you, nor the moon. I won't let the hell get too hot or the cold season freeze you. There was, a superst- there was a superstition that the phases of the moon affected the mind and your body. Th- th- this is why the English word for lunatic comes from the Latin word luna, which means moon. And the word epileptic comes from the Greek word moonstruck. There was a superstition that said that the moon impacted your mind and your body. If you were a lunatic, that comes from the Hebrew word, Latin word, luna, which means moon. Epileptic seizures comes from the Greek word moonstruck. Watch this. Watch this incredible. I need you to catch this now because many people believed even today superstitiously that the moon brought out the worst in you. You could be a regular man during the day. But when a full moon came out, werewolf came, something that was in you that was demonic could thrive (laughs) at nighttime. One old school singer said that the freaks come out at night. This is why when you go into a club, you never go into a club where the lights are on. You come into a club where the lights are what? Oh, which is why y'all know I wrestle so much with praise and worship always being dark. And many times y'all have to tell me, Pastor Mike, we're just trying to create an atmosphere. But what I understand is spiritually, if we'll cut some light on, what we allowing to come out in the dark, it is time for us as a people to come out of the dark. The scripture says the sun ain't going to strike you down and the moon ain't going to work. I want to declare that this particular psalm is suggesting that you won't lose your mind. I dare somebody to put your hand on your head right where you are and say, I won't lose my mind. Regardless of what I'm going through, I won't lose my mind. Regardless of how much it hurt, I will not lose my mind. I come against breakdown. I come against everything that the devil is trying to throw at you. For God, Ramasa, has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I decree and declare that this nation won't lose its mind. I decree and declare that this darkness, this dark cloud that has been placed over all of our cities, that's making racism come back. That's making racism and hatred and fear and doubt thrive devil you are a liar I decree and declare that my God is about to throw some shade that God he who sleep who never sleeps nor slumber he who is keeping Israel is keeping me don't let the darkness bring out the worst in you shame on you when I see the comments that are being posted in some of these live videos calling people monkeys and just run them over with your car and we should have never let them free. Don't let the darkness bring out the worst in you. Shame on you if you can stand in your pulpit and preach Jesus but won't shout Black Lives Matter. Shame on you if you think because you live in a vanilla suburb and now you got something to lose, you got to be a, a clown or a clone hiding in the midst of people because you don't want to lose your place at the table, to hell with that table. Who cares if you got a table if your brothers and sisters can't get in the house? Darkness will bring out the worst in you. Which is why you don't see day looting you don't see day burnings happens at night 
because there is something spiritual that dwells in darkness. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Pastor Mike, all lives matter. Black lives matter. Pastor Mike, what would Jesus say? Well, I believe Jesus gave us the blueprint to handle this particular predicament. Because the scripture says he lost one sheep and he left the 99 to go get the one. Now the 99 was safe. The 99 had food. The 99 had protection. The 99 had equality. The 99 had privilege. But he said, I love the one so much that this one deserves what the 99 get. We not asking to be better. We just asking to have the same opportunities and the same benefit of the doubt. And if we're not careful, this is why I'm grateful. I'm so grateful my people are asking for justice, not revenge. What we're saying is, Pastor Michael, you lose losing sleep? Yes. I'm being called on by government officials. I'm being called on by all of my members, by pastors. I'm in a unique seat where God has called me to be a bridge. And I understand if you're going to be a bridge, you get walked on by both sides. There are going to be times when I do things that my community is not going to understand. And they, gonna, they may call me a sellout, but I see what God is doing. There are going to be times when this side is going to call me a radical and say he needs to be more like Dr. King. When in actuality, we would still have Dr. King if this side didn't act a certain way. So we have to be clear, God, what are you calling us to? And I'm saying, God, I want to be smack dab in your will. Pastor Mike, what are you, what you're saying about having no worries sound cute semantically, but practically, what does it mean? Should the believer should back, sit back? Should the believer sit back apathetically and watch all that we have fought for, marched for, got bitten by dogs for, went to jail for, and yes, died for, go away? No. We should be fighting. We should be hating on these young people protesting. If I'm spiritual and I'm fighting back anger, what do you think people who ain't as spiritual as us gonna do? They're hurting. And the problem with America is that they keep having grammatical errors. They keep placing periods where they should place commas. This isn't George Floyd, period. It's George Floyd, comma. Alberry, comma. Rice, comma. Emmett Till, comma. Dr. King, comma. Breonna Taylor, comma. Malcolm X, comma. Jesus. And until we get to a place that we can address the sins of this country, the church will never be united. Because sadly, the church, especially my white evangelical brothers, are too connected to America to truly be Christian. Until we address the sins of this country. Until we address the sins of our own people. How I do not respect your protest if you won't raise your child. I had a brother call me this week and say, Pastor Mike, I'm thinking about protesting. And I lost a friend this week. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, the first thing you should protest is at your son's house. I said, because last time I talked to you, you ain't seen him in six months. So how you fight for somebody else's son and won't even go see the son that's breathing? It's time to have some hard conversations. Go be a father. Do you hear me? My son, I woke up this morning, a couple days ago, my son has a little twist in his hair and he wanted some color. So I said, man, I was getting ready to go to sleep. I said, put the color in his hair so now it's black. He look real good. And it's a little mint red, orange, little color on the tips. And um, my oldest son is not by lady and, and literally, uh, but he lives with me. So, so literally I did that. So he went to his mom's house. She was a little frustrated. Like you could have called because that's my son too, yada, yada, yada. So I picked up the phone in front of my son and literally said, hey, I want to apologize for not calling you. I said, you, you absolutely matter. 
I said, it was one of those decisions late at night. He was getting it twisted. I said, you know what? Just put some color in it. I said, but I should have did that. I said, but I, I realized something that happened because I didn't honor you or call you. Now Xander, when you fussed at him, just gave you a whatever. Because he took me not calling her as he ain't got to talk to her. So, so as a father, I said, no, no, no. I wanted him to see me apologize. That don't make me a weak man. That makes me an example. If I can't honor his mama, he won't honor his wife. Did you catch that? It is time to stop making speeches and make an example. Becoming the change we want to see. Fighting for social justice and equality. Leveling the playing field. Oh Lord, I'm finna get in trouble. Giving reparations. How can you hold a race of people down for 400 years? My grandfather who I spent a long time on the phone with this week, could not eat in a restaurant. If you know somebody 60 years old or older, they went through what we read about. If they're still alive, that means those who were for that are still alive. And if they told us to struggle, that means our opposers or our oppressors taught them the privilege. It is my assignment to push us to Jesus. Not the Jesus that loves mega churches. Not the Jesus that's for America. That perfect Palestinian Jew named Jesus who hung on a cross and died for all people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I'm here to call America, I'm here to call my church, I'm here to call the black church, I'm here to call the white church, I'm here to call all of us to the carpet. Because all of us are being hypocrites right now. If the white church can't say black lives matter, that makes you a hypocrite. Conversely, if the black church can't say trans lives matter, it makes us a hypocrite. Because just because their sexual orientation, are we now saying God don't love them? Are we so 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 are we better or are we worse or are we equal? So if the white church is saying God ain't on the side of the blacks, but then the black church is saying God ain't on the side of the gays, which one of us are wrong? He said, I died for everybody. Now you can leave my church. God bless you. I am here to say what won't nobody else say. All of us are being hypocrites. When we yell at a white church for not saying black lives matter, when we yell, when the black church ignores the plights of homosexuals and gays and trans, but we let them play in the band, we let them write the best music, but stay in your closet. Did God die for everybody or did he die for the people you want him to die for? I just lost 10 friends right there, but that's cool because we said 2020 was the year of vision. We thought that meant the vision for your business. No, 2020 is the year of vision. God's showing us how people really see us. He's showing us how people really view us. He's showing us how we really view us. And if you don't come out of your box, if you don't stand for what God said stand for, there are many things that I do not agree with. I do not agree with homosexuality. I do not agree with racism, but I do believe God died for everybody. And it is not my job to condemn or judge or place somebody in the hell. It is my job to say, God, here I am. Saying, God, I pray that this world turns back to you if my people who are called by my name. And that's the truth don't nobody want to talk about. Until we address the sins of this world and they ain't just racism. When a woman can't get paid the same thing as a man. Until we address that. Till we address root stuff that is embedded in our culture that black people have to give their children white names so they can get good jobs. Until we address it, the problem is we keep looking to that hill and God is saying, my help ain't coming from the hill. My help comes from above the hill. Pastor Mike, everybody's falling apart. Proverbs 24 and 10. If you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. Jesus. <laughs> I'm 
Taking a stand for God ain't popular. Taking a stand for God will get you left alone. Taking a stand for God will get stuff took from you. But for God I live. And for God I die. And before I be a slave, I be buried in my grave. Not just a slave who picks cotton. Some of us are slaves picking coin on jobs with people who don't be Slaves to the culture. That we don't speak truth to power because we're trying to make it to a certain status. We're blind that just because a company posts Black Lives Matter don't mean they actually believe it. What they're doing now is just posting and saying, hey, don't protest us. Don't stop our money. That's my stance, that until we address the sins of America, and those aren't just white sins, those are black sins, that what we do to our own people, then and only then can God be heard. God, I pray. I feel the weight of what I just said. God, I pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Which means, God, as you let stuff go from us, give us the strength to forgive others. God, people are hurting. I'm angry. But I'm a saying not. So, God, I ask that you cover us all, black, white, Latino, Korean. God, as a kid, you taught me red and yellow, black and white. We are precious in your sight. But life has taught us to divide. But God, I speak by faith that this world will realize that something is happening to our people that we can no longer be silent about. We are in the midst of black genocide. That when, when the pandemic affects us differently, when police brutality affects us differently. God, I pray right now for the spirit of the police department. Because until we understand the root of policemen, do we not yet understand the spirit? Patrolmen were first seen when slaves, they would ride at night on horses and they would ride at night to look for slaves who were running away from the plantation. And when they called a, a slave, the first thing they would ask that slave was, where are your papers? Did you have freedom papers? If that slave did not have papers, they would hang that slave and kill that slave as a lesson. They wouldn't even bury that slave. They would leave that slave hanging on a tree as a sign and a symbol to every slave who passed by that do not leave your plantation. That was patrolmen. Through years, most policemen wore white sheets at night. And sadly, God, till we address the root, we'll never be able to handle the fruit. So even though, yes, there are good policemen, what those policemen don't understand, by default, the fruit is poisonous because it comes from bad seed. This is why it's hard to find the good ones, easy to find the bad ones, because the root is damaged. And God, sometimes we have to deal with the root of the issue to move into the fruit. And God, sadly, it does not just stop there. Some of us have made some mistakes in the root of church. And that shame and that embarrassment and that guilt, this is why so many talented individuals are running from God. Because sadly, the church didn't receive them. God, I call a revival. I declare and decree, God, that they're coming home. God, I declare that you're raising one church. It's not about who's black. It's not about who's white. It's not about who's Latino or Korean. It's about what God we serve. And we serve God, the one and only true God. Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh, ah, the creator of heaven and earth. God, I pray right now that we will look up, not to the hill. I don't need a horoscope to tell me how my month going to be. 
I don't need a seance to tell me about my future. I don't need a psychic to tell me what move to make. God, I'm leaning and dependent on you. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not into my own understanding. In all my ways, I'm acknowledge you. And I know you're going to direct my path. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you for the boldness to be what you called us to be. It's in Jesus' name. Somebody just tell God thank you. Come on. Come on, just tell God thank you right where you are. Listen to me, my friend. Life is hard. But I don't believe God brought us this far just to bring us this far. I want to speak to a couple people right now, those of you who are hurting, my beautiful black brothers and sisters who are hurting, who are confused. Again, even last night, two nights ago, another brother is shot down, literally. And I heard somebody say, well, he had a taser. My father, who was a Bessemer police officer, worked with the FBI. He said to me last night, he said, Mike, what they don't understand is you are taught as a police officer to meet force with force. Meaning if somebody comes at you with a knife, you can meet them with equal force. That taser and a gun. Yet he's running away. Running away. And if by chance the story is true that he was drunk or an alcoholic, if you are a trained police officer and can't catch a drunk man, you probably shouldn't be a police officer. But yet again, it is natural to pull out a gun and shoot him down. Can I argue what would have happened if there was no video? So I commend Mayor Bottoms for taking swift action. I love that beautiful sister. I commend her for taking swift action. At the same time, Atlanta and many other cities are watching this happen saying not period comma another day another hashtag I also want to talk to my beautiful white brothers and sisters who watch and say right now we don't need you to speak up we need you to speak out we thank you for your prayers speak up but it's time for you to speak out to your friends to, to those who you know who think different than you it's not right. It's not right on no end and no spectrum. My last message is to those of you who play in the NBA. I am an avid LeBron James fan. I love him from the bottom of my heart, my favorite basketball player. But I am calling every NBA player to not play. Because we love you so much, the moment you step on that court, the entire energy behind this movement is going to cease. You may put on a shirt that say, I can't breathe. You may do a demonstration. Every owner is going to play some type of video. But hear me and hear me good. It's going to go from what are we doing for justice to how many points so-and-so had. Hear me when I say this. Hear the word of the Lord. Be on the right side of history. If we dribble that ball, we become entertainment again. But if we make them feel the unity of this movement, I believe we'll see justice together. I believe we'll see justice together. Last but not least, to those of you who are wrestling on where do, you, where do I go to church now, you know what I'm talking about. Pastor Mike, so many things have been happening with my church and my friends are telling me not to go to this church and not to go to that church. I want to speak directly to your heart and say, follow God. I want you to spend three days in prayer asking God, where should I be? Hear me when I say this. If somebody's in a relationship and that relationship has been abusive and they get out of that relationship and jump into a next one, that next relationship isn't going to be healthy because they never healed. I am telling you, take some time this week and heal, pray, seek God, trust God. I am praying for you. I am praying for you. I am praying that God leads you to make a decision that is in the best interest of your purpose and what God has called you to be. I want you to know that I love you. I want you to know that we are here for you. But I also want you to know that God's going to hear your prayer. He's going to send the confirmation you need this week that while you're trying to figure it out, God is already working it out on your behalf. I love you. Whatever you're giving today, you know how to give. You can text to give, text IROC with the amount you wish to give to 28950. 
If you're dealing with anxiety, pressure, low self-esteem, or you just need prayer, there's a link right there at the bottom of this comment section. Click that link. We're standing there. We're waiting to pray with you. I really believe what God is doing in this earth right now is God, God is using this moment to spark revival of the heart that although that revival may not happen in a building, it is happening in our hearts. Father, in the name of Jesus, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. In Jesus' name, I love you.